guys, this is Michelle from Heal Your Autism. Mark is about to cook something yummy for us. What is it, Mark? Yes, I am going to cook for you guys today, and I'm going to show you all the methods, but it's a southwestern style vegetable stew. Now, uh, it'll be medical medium compliant, but for you folks who are on gaps, I can show you how to gapify it. <clears throat> So we're going to do that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do though is we're going to go through all the ingredients and the spices and that kind of stuff uh, and whatever herbs I'm using so that you'll know what they are. Then we'll pause and then from then I'll uh, prep all of this stuff and I'll show you what it should look like once it's prepped and then from there I'll show you how to cook it. And it cooks in a few stages uh, and it's easy. But I'll show you exactly how easy it is. All right, so we'll start with on the left over here, because you know we all read from left to right. Well, not all of us, <clears throat> but um, cilantro. Now, for you folks who aren't familiar with this, uh, it may be called coriander where you're from, leafy coriander. Uh, these are green bell peppers turning ripe because they turn red. Most of us know that. Some of us don't. Uh, these are just plain old bell green peppers that are uh, ripening. We went to the farmer's market this morning. Yeah, these are local the, bell peppers. Yeah. Uh, and I'll point out the local stuff as well. Uh, the white mushrooms. These are Mexican. They come from Mexico, which <laughs> is fine. Which is fine. Uh, uh, they're, uh, no problem with those. Then uh, plain old carrots, just orange carrots. And for those of you who don't know, there are other colors of carrots as well. <clears throat> Uh, okra. Now, this is the one vegetable I've never heard medical medium talk about. So I don't know if it's compliant or not. I'm waiting on information back, but uh, I'll get back to you on this once the jury comes back in with this decision. But they had them at the farmer's market, so that's they where were, they came from. These are local grown here in Oklahoma, like the peppers. Uh, <clears throat> a red onion, a butternut, or uh, yeah, butternut squash. And I got that at a local grocery store. Uh, now, let's see. Just so you know, I don't think any of this is organic. But that's okay because medical medium says you don't necessarily have to do organic. It's good, but if you can't, you're going to heal anyway. All right? So. The stuff from the farmer's market is likely organic, but they can't, they don't want to go for the label because it costs so much money. Well, it does, and it's a lot of work to do that. Uh, but then uh, zucchinis, these were local. Uh, grown here in Oklahoma. Uh, yellow squash. Uh, I got these at the grocery store. Uh, here, six cloves of garlic. All right? I don't do any cooking without garlic. We even, Michelle even makes a spinach soup smoothie with garlic, which is really good. Yeah, it's garlic, tomato, and spinach. In a, in, and then you blend it together. What's your liquid? Water. Oh, okay. All right. Anyway, so water. And then, these are Fresno peppers. Got at the farmer's market got, today. Uh, yeah, didn't get these at the farmer's market. Oh. These were uh, um, at the grocery store. Oh. But uh, anyway, uh, and here are the spices. And uh, I showed you the one herb. Well, here's another herb, oregano. I'm going to use some of that. I've got two of those, actually. Chili powder, right? Cumin. Smoked paprika. That'll... Uh, Add a little bit, bit of complexity to the flavor of the finished stew. And poultry seasoning will do that as well. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we use all this stuff. But we're going to uh, pause right now. and We'll be uh, back when it's finished. Yeah, and I'm going to prep. All right, guys. We're back. And Mark spent an hour and a half cutting all this stuff up. <clears throat> what can we do if we don't want to cut all of this up? Okay, well, I spent an hour and a half cutting it up by hand. And I'll show you real quick, and then I'll get to... <clears throat> All right, carrots, butternut squash, zucchinis, and the yellow squash, mushrooms, which I just pretty much quartered and sliced. If they were small, I quartered them, sliced the larger ones. Okra, those were the ripening green bell peppers. Onions, which I, it was one big, very large um, red onion and six cloves of garlic, along with cilantro. 
right? How much cilantro is that? That is about three tablespoons of cilantro. Now, to give you an estimate on all that I've used so that you can have the ingredients, mushrooms. I did two pounds of mushrooms. Zucchinis, I did about two pounds of zucchinis. Uh, one and a half pounds of the yellow squash. I did one and a half pounds of carrots. One large butternut squash, which, if I remember rightly, was about five pounds. Yes, I know, you're probably wondering, is this going to fit in the pot? Well, we'll see. <clears throat> Even professional cooks with years of experience make mistakes. Uh, that was about a pound and a half of okra. Uh, that is definitely a pound and a half of red bell peppers. That onion was a well over a pound. Uh, all right. Now, uh, anyway, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm cooking this the medical medium way, but I'm even going further because Michelle and I have been doing no fat. So I'm going to cook this stew without fat. Now, for you GAPS folks, here's what you could do. <clears throat> I have... This is water that I use for uh, the medical medium cooking, right? I'll put that over here. But for you GAPS folks, you don't have to use these exact same oils. <clears throat> uh, you could even use lard or beef fat or chicken fat on GAPS to cook with if you wanted, right? Now, if you were going to start cooking, uh, and the first thing I'm going to start cooking here are the onions and the garlic. So if you're going to use any one of these oils, I've got grapeseed oil, olive oil and coconut oil. If you wanted to use plant fats, you could. You could use animal fats too. You're fine with that. But I would use two to three tablespoons of any of the, those oils or animal fats to start cooking the onions and the garlic. Because then the next step is cooking the mushrooms and they're going to soak up a lot of the oil. So you might have to add oil. All right. But, uh, <clears throat> That's for you GAPS folks, because you have the fat. Now, at the end, once this is cooked, you can garnish it with sour cream. You can garnish it with cheeses if you're, if you're able to do cheeses on GAPS. I know a lot of you artistic uh, uh, kids and, and other adults, you can't do dairy, so don't do dairy. Uh, <clears throat> you, could, uh, you could just garnish it with other veggies. So, anyway, we're going to start cooking this. Uh, you'll see me... Uh, working on hash browns for Michelle. I'm cooking those with water too, but letting them brown, and I'll show you how that works. All right, this pot is probably a three-gallon pot. It's been sitting on medium heat here, number six, well, number five, actually. This is a, an electric stove with a ceramic glass top. Been on there a while. All right, first thing, onions. You won't want to be standing near these onions. Alright. And, let's do this, guys. Wooden spoon. Right? Or spatula, whatever you want to call it. I use stainless steel cookware. We do not use cast iron. Now, on gaps, you may be doing that. Uh, on medical medium, I don't use any metal cookware except for stainless steel. Uh, I, no aluminum. Uh, no cast iron. Um, we use ceramic. Yeah, we do ceramic, but in that case, it's coated in ceramic, so it's it's not a problem. So uh, anyway, but for you gaps, folks, uh, stainless steel is great because that means you have to detox less metals later. But for us on medical medium, stainless steel, so that we don't have to continue detoxing all the uh, heavy metals all the time. All right. That's a red onion. Now, as a professional cook, something that I learned was season everything as you go. Not much, just a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt. This is just plain old sea salt. And we have not given up salt. No, not entirely. I'd rather food taste good instead of bland. <clears throat> All right. That's cooking.
our kitchen isn't quite big enough. Is this called the food juggling show? This is definitely the juggling, the culinary jugglers, yeah. There you go. Not jugular, juggler. <clears throat> All right. Now, I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit to six. And I've got a glass lid here. It actually fits on a five gallon pot that we had, that I still have when we were doing GAPS diet. So I'm going to uh, repurpose this and cover the onions and let them cook. That'll steam them real quick. Then we'll add the garlic, let that cook for a few minutes. Then we'll add the mushrooms. Now we'll season the mushrooms after they steam some. Then when they cook down, we'll add the, the longer cooking ingredients like uh, carrots and butternut squash uh, and peppers and we'll let that cook down and get soft. Once that gets soft, then we'll add the zucchini and the yellow squash and the okra uh, last. Then we'll season everything again. I'll measure out spices for you guys so you can see. And then uh, we'll add the spices at the last and we'll season everything at the last. And you'll see, you don't have to add any liquid to this. Liquid will cook out and you'll have a great tasting liquid to go with all of this stuff. How do you know uh, how much water to use when you just did the onions? You use enough to cover the bottom of the pan because you want the onions to soak up a little bit of the water uh, because it's hot because it'll start cooking the onions right away. There we go. There's the onions cooking. How do you know when they're ready? Well, as you can, if you can see, We'll need to let them cook a little bit more, but here's, let me see if I can show you a difference between some. See, right here, and right here, and right here, those onions aren't quite cooked yet, but you see the ones that have kind of lost a little bit of their pink, purplish color, and you can kind of see through them, they're starting to become translucent. Some of them are starting to become translucent. That, when they all become translucent, or mostly translucent, they're ready. Did you just add more water? I added a tiny bit. Why? Uh, because I see that there's no water sitting in the bottom of the pot. See right there? So what happens if there isn't anything? They start to brown. Now, you could let them brown if you wanted, but in this case, because there's no oil, they'll stick. So I don't want them to stick to the bottom of the pan. Yeah, there we go. They're starting to cook. Even more, I should say. Yeah, they're starting to get a little bit translucent. Now, for sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and add the garlic. We don't need to be here 45 minutes watching me cook. Well, I can't pause. I guess you could. You want to pause? We'll pause. We'll pause. Be back. Okay, guys, we're back. The onions have cooked for a couple more seconds. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the garlic. Okay. Stir it up. Okay. Garlic's in there cooking away. Mm. You know, you can also tell an onion's cooked because it's sweet. And those are sweet now. So They were really hot. They were, yes, they were really hot. Almost like a hot pepper hot. Add a tiny bit of salt for seasoning because I could tell they weren't quite seasoned like I wanted them to do. Then, <clears throat> next thing, mushrooms. So you don't need the garlic to cook very long? No, uh -uh. because this, all, this is all steaming and as long as it's going to cook, it's going to get cooked anyway. Sure, you have room in this pot. 
I, I, I will make it fit. Are you gonna let the mushrooms cook down a little bit? Yes. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to the mushrooms. Now, what's interesting about mushrooms, some people may not know this, mushrooms have a natural MSG. They make it themselves. And so, hi, that's Lori, one of our uh, cats, and he's in here wanting fish. <laughs> so, uh, he got fish about two hours ago, but it's still on his mind. Anyway, but uh, mushrooms make their own MSG. So they enhance the flavors of stuff when you add them to uh, dishes that you cook. Yeah, what's cool is even if you don't use any fat or oil or anything like that, if you have mushrooms that you can cook down, the flavor is really good. Exactly, and I'm gonna let these cook down. Now, I added a little bit of seasoning to that. I think you guys saw that. It was just salt, right? Uh-huh, just salt. Why I'm haven't gonna... you added pepper? Uh, I'm not much of a pepper fan. I don't really care about white pepper or black pepper, and uh, uh, I'd just rather have that's weird since you like all kinds of other peppers. Yeah, well, that's true. All right, let's... Okay, a little bit more. There we go. Just enough to barely taste the mushrooms. All right. Now, I'm taking the lid. I'm putting it back on. <clears throat> and we're going to pause to let the mushrooms cook down. And then I'll show you what we're cooking, what we're going to throw in there next. <clears throat> okay, here's what it looks like. Guys, we're back. After a few minutes. <clears throat> and here's my hash browns. Uh, chili powder and garlic. And see the liquid has come out of the mushrooms. That's what we're looking for. They've cooked down. <clears throat> here's what we're going to add next. The diced butternut squash. And... I don't think I did cover this, I don't remember, about buy, being able to buy them already uh, cut. So anyway, let's talk about this real quick. I don't think anyone in our audience, or very few, are going to spend the time peeling and dicing a butternut squash, carrots, uh, bell peppers, mushrooms, and that kind of stuff, zucchinis. You can buy all, I've seen this already diced in grocery stores, especially Whole Foods. Well, the even nice, in the frozen food section. Well, even in the frozen food section. So you can find butternut squash diced, carrots cut up, all kinds of veggies cut up, especially in the frozen food section. You can just bring those home. As long as it's just the vegetables in the bags and no other ingredients, you're fine. So bring all of those home. Don't worry about thawing them out. <clears throat> Cook your mushrooms, whatever else, and then throw everything else in like I'm showing you in this process and you'll have the exact same result. All right, so butternut squash, you can buy these all diced at different places. So butternut squash is going in. Carrots. These are the hardest, in, these are the hardest ingredients, so I put those in to let those cook soft first. Then we'll go ahead and cover. We'll let those cook a bit, okay? Okay, guys, we are back. Uh, we have gotten to the point now where the squash and the carrots are well cooked, and I'll show you how you can tell. Also, though, where did all this liquid come from? All the liquid? That's all the liquid that came out of the vegetables. Notice, when I started, all I did was put in about that much water in the bottom of the pan, and most of that cooked out and turned to steam before I got uh, the onions and the garlic in. So... <clears throat> All that liquid, I guess you can see it. Yeah, all that liquid came out of the vegetables. That's why on medical medium, if you're eating raw fruits all the time and some raw veggies and this type of stuff, you don't really need to drink water because you're gonna stay hydrated on this stuff. And that's why he wants it to be raw because you're getting all the vitamins and minerals. Because when I, I'll tell you this right now, I learned this in culinary school and you may or may not know it. When you cook stuff, you lose, you destroy all the minerals and the vitamins, or most of them. So anyway, let's show you here. Uh, cooked carrots. Here's how you can tell if they're cooked. Should be able to mash them. Those are done. So what we'll do is 
So we'll put them back in there. And then <clears throat> here is the next stuff we're going to put in. Let's do... Now notice, all that's cooked down. It was up to here when I put it in there. Bell peppers. <clears throat> now, this is going to strain the pan a little bit. <laughs> Hi, baby. That's Mr. Lori again, wanting fish. <laughs> See? <clears throat> All right. Now. Now, is that going to cook down? Are you going to be able to add your okra? Oh, I I'll get everything in there. Are you sure? I promise. Hey, you want to say hi? Hey, Lori. Say hi to, say hi to the folks to heal your autism. Yeah? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what we're going to do, we're going to put the lid back on. Let that cook down some more. We'll get back to you in just a few minutes. Okay, guys. We are back. <clears throat> Here is where we have all the veggies. Notice they've all cooked down. They've all fit in the pot. And look at all that liquid. All right? And this is fatless, so there's no oil in here either. <clears throat> now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to measure out spices for you guys and the herbs so that you know uh, how much goes in. So let's start with oregano. <clears throat> I'll use English measurements because that's what we hear, use here in the U.S., but I can kind of translate them into metric if you need. <clears throat> All right, let's do... That's one level tablespoon. Two level tablespoons of oregano. Now, tablespoons, um, one tablespoon is half an ounce, if that helps. Uh, it's also 14 milliliters, if that helps. I know that's a volume measurement. I didn't check it for milligrams. <clears throat> then, go on to cumin. Now, Michelle's not that much of a fan of cumin. So I'm not going to overdo it. One teaspoon, or tablespoon, excuse me. Two tablespoons. That's all I'm going to use for this. But he would use more. I would use probably three. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then, one of my favorite spices, smoked paprika. Gives it a little bit of a smoky taste, but we're not going to put too much in there. <clears throat> There's about one level tablespoon. And all the other stuff that fell in there. Yeah, a little bit that fell in there. That's all right. <clears throat> a second level tablespoon. Again, that's a half an ounce. Or... Uh, 14, I think it's 15 milliliters. All right. Poultry seasoning. This is a mix of stuff. Sage, thyme, onion, black pepper, marjoram, celery seed, and cayenne pepper. This is all organic. I am just going to put one tablespoon of that in. And you see me leaving the little uh, salt and pepper like shaker stuff. I don't particularly like those. And then we're going to put in a little bit of chili powder. Michelle doesn't mind chili powder, as long as it's not overdone. I'll put in one tablespoon of that. Then, 
What we haven't done, the last veggie ingredient, is the okra. Now, if you've never used okra before, okra gets slimy when it's cooked, unless it's deep fried. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and put the okra in. We're going to... Yep, a piece of okra got away. We'll go ahead and stir everything up. And then... <clears throat> Why'd you put the okra in last? Uh, it's After a thickener. Okay. It's a thickener. <clears throat> because it is, because it gets slimy and thickens it up, uh, I don't want it thickened up before I get everything cooked. Alright. Then I'm going to take the uh, spices, mix all that together. I'm just using the handle of the wooden spatula. Dumping it all in there. What I'm going to do, take it off the heat. And I'm just going to stir all that in. Okay. It smells good. Yeah, it does smell good, doesn't it? Mm. All right. I smell the cumin. Yup. Smell everything else in there too. It smells like feet. Yeah. Cumin always smells like feet to you. you must be eating a lot of my food if your feet smell like cumin. <laughs> Alright. Okay, that's pretty well stirred up. You see how it's kind of brown all throughout? <clears throat> you could add tomatoes to this if you wanted. But I don't enjoy tomatoes all that much, to be honest. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we need to season this because it has not been seasoned yet. What does seasoned mean? When I, when I say seasoned, my definition is salt. Right? Pepper would be the other thing, right? Pepper could, you could use pepper. I'm not that much of a black pepper guy. Uh, but... Uh, you could also season things with uh, other salty uh, foods. For instance, like Parmesan cheese or other hard cheeses that, are, that have a little bit of salt to them. You could use that and then you could come back and add a little bit of uh, sea salt if you need it instead of using just salt. But since we don't eat cheese on the medical medium, I tend to use salt until I get things that taste good. So in this case, what we'll do... You've quite used quite a bit of salt since the beginning of this. I have, but not on all the veggies. <clears throat> I used it on the mushrooms, and <clears throat> on the onions and the garlic, and then on the squash, uh, on the butternut squash and the carrots. But after that, I didn't season anything else because if you keep, if you season absolutely everything as you put it in, you may wind up with it being too salty. So at some point, I stop adding salt, and then I wait till the very end to season it with salt, uh, just to make sure the flavor is good. So what we'll do, I'm going to stir this around, and then we'll just do this. I'm going to reach. Oh, before we do, let's add some cilantro. That cilantro, or leafy coriander, as some of you guys might know it. Okay. Now, mm, that smells good. You can just see some of the uh, cilantro leaf in there. And I don't want to overdo it with cilantro. So if I add some later, that'll be fine. Then what we're going to do... Since I added some salt, we need to taste it. Needs a little bit more. So you're salting to taste. We are. To your taste, not mine. <clears throat> Mark has a I, more salt uh, meat than me. Yeah, I, uh, I am a pretty salty guy. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, 
let's taste a little bit more. This should be enough, right there. <clears throat> okay, because that way it won't be too salty for her to eat. <clears throat> okay, and let's taste it again. Got to taste it every time. Don't assume that's good. <clears throat> okay. So it's really not quite done yet. No, not quite. The okra needs to cook through. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this because the cilantro flavor wasn't quite as prominent as I'd like it, but now it will be. So let's go ahead and mix so it So you up. ended up using the whole bowl that you had chopped earlier. I did, that was about two and a half to three tablespoons uh, of cilantro. Each tablespoon being about 14 milliliters. So, or half an ounce. Because the medical medium diet, you have to cook so much of your food. Mark made this amount so that it would last, how long does this, like a week? About five days, about to the end of my work week. So, but you see, you have to take a lot of time. We started at 3.30. Uh -huh. So, um, it takes a while to do things, especially if you chop all of your vegetables yourself. Exactly, and if you don't... So it would take an hour off of that if you bought them all chopped. Right, you can say that. It still out. takes a while, as you can see, if you subtract an hour from from 3.30 to 7. But I will, I'll tell you this. I would much rather control what goes into my food than just assuming somebody else is going to be that caring and empathetic in, about my diet. <clears throat> I will cook for me before I'll go out to eat. Well, it hurt, doesn't hurt that it tastes amazing. Well, that helps too. <laughs> so Don't be arrogant or anything. Uh, no, that was just being slightly less than humble. <laughs> but uh, anyway, but that is the Southwestern veggie stew that I do. And you guys can eat it by itself. We use it, we uh, put it on potatoes. We steam some potatoes and put that on top of gold, uh, Yukon gold potatoes. So you could do that, cauliflower rice on the medical medium. Uh, but no grains are good on either gaps or medical medium, so I wouldn't do grains. Corn is a grain, just so you know. But anyway, well, that is it. And, and how much longer does this have to cook? Oh, the okra will be done probably in uh, 15 minutes at the most. Let's see if we can find a piece of okra. It may not need to get slimy, only because uh, the carrots and the... Uh, uh, and we actually squash cooked down. We actually tasted our first raw okra today, mm -hmm. okay. and I really enjoyed it. Uh, wow, I was that good? Oh, yeah, that was, yep. good. That was really good. Uh -huh. Did have yeah. a little bit of a crunch. Uh huh. Mm, good. That's good. Guys, this is really good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so make it and send your pictures. Yes, please do. Tell me how you like it. Anyway, that is our recipe for today, and there will be more coming over the next. Years, months, days, <laughs> weeks. Not hours. Not seconds either. No, no. Okay, thanks for joining us. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.